An ancient mystery that has been shrouded in the sands of time for over 2,500 years may finally be unraveled as archaeologists in Egypt have stumbled upon a shipwreck that holds the key to unlocking secrets long thought to be lost forever. This exciting discovery has the potential to shed light on a significant chapter in human history, offering new insights and perspectives into our collective past. Before moving on to the video, hit the like button and subscribe to Unexplained History, because there are many more mysteries that you want to know in the upcoming videos. Let's get into the video. In March 2019, the world discovered that the Institute had found a wreck unlike any seen before. The only previous evidence that the Hulk existed was one ancient historian's description, and many people thought he was lying, until archaeologists in Egypt uncovered a ship. It's amazing what some of humanity's earliest civilizations were able to accomplish. The ancient Egyptians and Greeks didn't have the materials or knowledge we have today, but they built incredible structures, developed new farming technologies, and came up with ideas that have influenced much of philosophical and mathematical thought. Ancient Egyptian dental practices were advanced compared to those of other cultures of the time, and other areas of Egyptian medicine progressed even faster. For example, although a belief in magic governed many treatments, the Egyptians nonetheless displayed extensive knowledge of anatomy and used honey in their medicines, which has since been proven to have antibacterial properties. Other Egyptian innovations that spread to Greece and the rest of the world included the first paper in black ink, made from papyrus and beeswax soot and vegetable. Between 685 and 525 BC, trade between Egypt and Greece began, and the ancient Greeks took ideas from their Nile Delta-based counterparts and expanded upon them. For example, the Greeks began to put aside old supernatural accounts of the world around us in the belief that they could rationally explain the universe. Greek thought laid the foundations for the idea that everything is subject to the laws of nature. Plato had a similarly lasting impact, and during medieval times, scholars were discouraged from questioning these two giants of antiquity, which partly explains their legacy. Another area pioneered by the Greeks was historical study, and one Greek individual, Herodotus, did more than many others to develop the concept of the historian. Yet he has always been a controversial figure. Herodotus was termed not only the father of history by Cicero, but also the father of lies. Herodotus was born around 484 BC in what is now Turkey. His family was wealthy enough to give him the best education, and he was able to travel so much as an adult, suggesting that he had money of his own. His first-hand descriptions of various battles suggest that he was once a foot soldier in the army. One thing we do know is that Herodotus wrote down what he saw during his many travels through Europe, Asia, and Africa. His accounts cover everything from everyday life to major historical events like the Battle of Marathon. And he also described the seven wonders of the ancient world. The problem is that Herodotus sometimes passed off the stories of others as his own and was prone to speculation. One of Herodotus's understandably disputed claims is that he had seen in his book histories, Herodotus describes an encounter with a strange boat called a Baris on the Nile in the 5th century BC in Egypt. Until recently, there was no evidence that such ships had ever sailed there, so some thought it was just another of his fantasies. It took over two millennia to unearth the evidence to support Herodotus' Baris description. The ancient submerged city of Thanis Heraklion appears to provide tangible proof and a clear response to the argument about Herodotus' description and the boat's existence. Atlantis was invented by Plato, but the sunken city of Thanis Heraklion was described by Herodotus and other contemporary figures, including Strabo, a Greek geographer who lived hundreds of years after Herodotus. It was located at the mouth of the Nile's canopic branch in Egypt. A British Air Force commander flying over the Mediterranean Sea in 1933 noticed the buried ruins of Thanos Heraklion where the river forks off. 
The European Institute for Underwater Archaeology and Azem's initial dig began in 2000, although the archaeologists were searching for late 1700s French ships. In the early 2000s, divers found a piece of an ancient statue that belonged to a giant figure of Hopi, the ruler of the river and the Egyptian god of fertility. The statue had once stood on a plinth, guarding the port of Phanis Heraklion. As they continued to investigate, they found more statues, jewelry, pottery, and other relics from the long-lost city. Phanis Heraklion predated Alexandria, which was founded in 331 BC, and the former city was once a key port for ships traveling between Greece and Egypt. Like Venice, it was a city threaded through with canals, and at its center was the temple to the supreme god of Munjab, where Cleopatra was crowned queen of Egypt. Unfortunately, Faunus Heraclean's fortunes were not to last between the two world wars. The first name is Egyptian, while the second is Greek and derives from Hercules. Herodotus characterized acacia ships as looking like the Carinian lotus and having gum-like sap. According to Herodotus, the ships were built using 3.3-foot acacia planks laid like bricks. Herodotus watched a barris being built in 450 BC and took detailed notes. After the planks were assembled, beams were placed over the top, and the seams were lined with papyrus. The mast was made from another piece of acacia, and the sails were again made from papyrus. City's Center for Maritime Archaeology has been circulating the e-discoveries, Azems, and in the watery ruins of Phanis Heraclion. The latter organization has uncovered over 70 sunken seagoing vessels that were built between the 8th and 2nd centuries BC. Fascinatingly, two of the boat labelled Ship 17 is made of acacia planks, just as Herodotus claimed. The planks even feature the same unique joining method, evidence of which could previously only be found in Herodotus. The vessel is remarkable, since its ribs are teen and over six feet long and hold the planks together with pegs. Other ships employed mortis and tenon joints. Ship 17 is almost identical to Herodotus' description, despite its larger size, and may have been built in the same shipyard where the ancient historian once stood to watch Beerus ships being built. According to Herodotus, each boat had a door-shaped crate made of reed mats sewn to tamarisk wood, which rested on the Beerus ship's four corners and worked in combination with the ship's four sails. The book by Alexander Belov, an archaeologist from the Center for Egyptological Studies from the Russian Academy of Sciences, analyzes the ship and how it fits with both Herodotus's writing and the wider shipbuilding history of the Nile, called Ship 17. If you want to learn more about this fascinating subject, subscribe to us now. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like the video.